In the spirit of Christmas, I thought I'd make a video answering the question, is Christmas time a good time to hunt? Well, the answer to that question is yes, absolutely. But there are some very specific strategies at play here because you could end up doing more harm than good if you don't do it right. The big thing that anybody will tell you this time of year, Christmas time and late season, is food is the most important thing. When you're trying to hunt big bucks or bucks in general, they've been running all season long and they need food. If you want a more in-depth video on food, watch this video. Food is the key to a buck's heart. That's what they're looking for because they've been running all season long and they are just very, very hungry. They're exhausted. They've depleted all their fat reserves. They need food. So the best way to target a buck is to find the food sources. Now here's something that I will tell you. Where I live, I live in an agricultural area. So there's lots of ag fields, hay, corn, beans, rye, triticale, wheat, barley, you name it. Especially around here, there's a lot of dairy farms. So that rye and triticale especially, and deer do really like rye. And what I'll see and what happens in these areas is these deer herds, specifically the doe. Those are the deer that are hitting those larger food sources, say the rye fields, right? Those doe, four, five, six, maybe 10 of them, they're hanging out in the rye field. And what happens this time of year is, you know, bucks and does, they don't want to have anything to do with each other. Yeah, you might still see a little bit of rut action. It's the post rut. You might still see some buck to doe kind of hanging out. But for the most part, does are staying away from buck. They've been, you know, mingling and chasing all fall long and now now they want now they're separating they're getting away from each other and so what i've seen is where the doe are the buck are not because there's a lot of rye fields around here when there's a group of doe out there when i see a group of doe kind of moving in a specific area a buck's not going to be with them i've hardly ever seen a buck with a doe during late season actually in fact i never have now I guarantee you many other people have. Every place is different. But here for me, Southeast PA in this agricultural community area, I hardly ever see bucks with does. They're just staying apart from each other. The key for me this time of year is I need to have that small food source, that small secluded secret food source that these bucks are gonna feel safe in. Does aren't gonna be hanging out in this area but the bucks are. For example, I planted a brassicas plot back in August. Nice little plot secluded down in this in this area. Throughout the year, doe are hanging out in there, but this time of year, doe are kind of hanging out into their groups or getting in their groups again, and they're gonna go hang in some of the bigger fields while these bucks, they're gonna feel safe and secluded and tucked away back in these little pockets of woods, these thick areas next to these small isolated food zones, right? So this Braska's plot is less than a quarter acre. It's extremely tiny. But the other day, unfortunately, I bumped a really nice buck. Um, well, this was like two weeks ago, but I bumped a really nice buck that was bedded 50 yards from that food plot. I don't want to bump bucks like that. I'll get to that in a second. But he was bedded really close to that plot. Real big trophy buck that I have not seen at all, all year. But that showed me, hey, the, this plot, this isolated plot, this is where the bucks are hanging out and bucks are gonna be in these smaller isolated plots while the doe are hanging out in the big rye fields, the ag fields, these bucks are gonna stay tucked back and, and they just wanna rest. They don't wanna go out and feed in a huge open field. They, would just, they just wanna bed right close to some food, good food and they just want a short commute every day. So that's the big thing for late season is food. And some of the other good ones food wise, you know, soybeans and corn, those are obviously good ones. Most people around this area though, the corn and soybeans is harvested. There's not really many people that will leave corn and soybeans specifically for deer, but a few people do. Another way that you can hunt late season, another strategy is deer drives. Now, here's the thing about deer drives. Deer drives are not good if, if you're trying to hold a specific deer, right? If there's a big trophy buck in the area and yeah, you could drive him out of a bottom and probably get him, but you're sending the pressure in that area through the roof. And if you're trying to do deer herd management, you're trying to hold deer on your property, the big smart deer there, they know what's up and they're not gonna come back year in and year out because they know you do drives every year at said time. Yeah, you might get a buck, you might get a decent one, um, but I just don't prefer drives because you're just, you're you're getting rid of everything in that area and you're, the pressure's through the roof. So that's why I don't like doing deer drives. But if you're just trying to get meat on the table, it's a very effective way. Deer drives have deep roots in whitetail history. They've been doing deer drives for centuries. It's a very effective way to kill deer if you're trying to put meat on the table. But from a management standpoint, I try to stay away from deer drives. And my third tip for you here, it kind of goes to deer drives, is avoid the bedding areas, sort of. Again, other people will tell you different things, but this time of year, kind of like early season, big bucks have pretty low tolerance for human interruption, right? The rut deer are just so crazed on chasing doe that they can handle a little bit more human interference in their life. They, If you bump a buck in the rut, you know, he might come back if there's a doe in that area. But late season, kind of like early season, they're a lot less tolerant, right? And if you bump a buck like I unfortunately did the other week, the chances of him coming back are a lot less than they would be in the rut. And so I try to avoid bedding areas at all costs this time of year because I want deer on my property this time of year. 
and I want to hold them throughout the year. And we don't have a huge property here, so it's not like I can hold tons of deer. And so the deer that are here, I want to keep them here. And so I'm trying to avoid walking through bedding areas or hunting close to bedding areas. If bedding is close to food or there's travel routes between food, I'm trying to make sure that my access is good into those areas. So that way these deer, I'm not bumping them. I'm just hunting the edge of this food and they come from their bedding to me rather than me going to them. It's important to identify these uh, bedding areas just so that you don't make those mistakes. I've made this mistake many, many times where I will walk into a place, my wind, I don't give a crap what it's doing, a lot of stuff like that. I'll bump deer and I won't see anything for another week or so and, and th that happens a lot. Again, big bucks, just deer in general, they don't have as much of a tolerance for humans this time of year, so if you bump a deer, they might not come back. Bedding areas are a great way to hunt deer, and if you hunt them right, again, other people will tell you differently that you could hunt bedding areas this time of year, um, but you have to do it right. And I'm not disagreeing with them, but again, you have to do them right, but you gotta make sure you're not doing a lot more harm than good. Again, a lot like early season. You can have really successful early season hunts, but you gotta do it right, and you gotta be careful how you're going about things. Just thought I'd make this video for you guys. Again, Christmas time is a great time to hunt deer. Late season in general, a very, very good time to hunt deer, especially because they're always on food, so you just hunt the food, and they're gonna show up eventually. If you wanna check out more videos on how to hunt whitetail, watch this playlist up here. If you wanna check out merch, you see the merch right here, check it out, link in the description. A whole bunch of stuff, available. a whole bunch of stuff. And if you wanna check out bonus content and all the the gear that I use links in the description go check them out there we will see you in the next one